it's my privilege to introduce to you, uh, first of all, Andile Nlovo, who is originally from Johannesburg, South Africa, is now in his seventh season with the Washington Ballet. At the age of 15, he trained with Martin Schoenberg, director of Ballet Theatre Afrikan, and went on to perform lead roles with the African Ballet Theatre and Garner International Dance Awards. Excuse me. South African. South I'm sorry, South African. Thank you. He is also an accomplished choreographer, having choreog choreo choreographed the Washington Ballet Studio Company's performance of The Guardian of the Pool. Welcome. We also have with us Casper Horton, who has been dancing since he was five years old. Having first performed with Little Tommy and the Crump Clowns at the age of seven, he's gone on to perform with artists ranging from Mariah Carey to Stevie Wonder, and from Chaka Khan to J Balvin and Becky G. With training from the Universal Dance Designs, Arlene Kennedy and the Debbie Allen Dance Company, Casper has received honorable mention from the young artists and performed around the world. Welcome, Casper. Thank you. And finally, we have with us Ming Davis, who earned a slot in the prestigious Beijing Dance Academy at the age of 12, and then joined the National Ballet of China, where she danced for 18 years. During the Cultural Revolution, Ming performed in ballets such as the Red Detachment of Women and Red Mansions. She now lives in Chicago, where she teaches ballet, traditional Chinese dance, and folk dance, while also maintaining connections with the National Ballet of China and the Beijing Dance Academy. Dile, why don't you start us off? Tell us your story. Well, it's a long one, but uh, I'll try to cut it, sh not make it too long. I uh, started off in a place called Lady Smith, KwaZulu Natal. That is Zululand in South Africa, where I was born. And so I went through school. Um, very, very bad conditions, in very bad conditions where you'd have no shoes to go to school, where you'd just wear khakis. And at that time also, it was the healing of South Africa's apartheid era. Uh, so this is just the beginning, and uh, things are not yet going that far. So this is what I had to go through. And then years, by, years went by, and uh, my mom moved us back to Newcastle, which is just a town about an hour away from there. And when I went there, then that's when I started being in a uh, multicultural school. And the challenges came there, the cultural challenges, the color difference, you know, not having to see other people um, that are of a different color more, you know, often. So it's like, oh, wow, hi, who are you? You know, <laughs> it's like going to a zoo or something. I know it's kind of, it kind of sounds bad, but um, since then, I stayed there, played soccer, played rugby, and played cricket. That, those were the sports that I loved. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's three of the most uh, well-recognized sports in South Africa. So that's what everybody wants to do. And I did that, obviously, and um, years went by. We are in Johannesburg now. Now we're in Johannesburg with my aunt, I lived with my aunt, and uh, my mom was still looking for a job. I still carried on playing soccer. Um, was in a school, um, good school, uh, with English, and because I never learned English properly before. So when I went to Johannesburg, this is when I actually started learning English, and um, took me a while to do that because you know I come from I came from a rural area, so learning learning uh, was learning was really slow that time and I had to build those, build a, a way to uh, speak or talk to people. It was really, really awkward because I just did not know how to act around people or be around people. And so that went on, that went on, and I uh, now I am in Soweto, Soweto, South Africa, in Johannesburg, Gauteng. And um, now my sister is, my sister who is four years older than me, is now interested in dance because my mom and my grandfather were also dancers. Now she's interested in dance. And this is when I start noticing different things that people can do. Um, I was artistically inclined where I worked with my hands. So I, I tried to paint, I was, I was writing on walls, I, was, I, w I could draw anywhere. I could draw someone's face from f in, in five minutes 
that's the talent that I had naturally. So my, um, my aunt took me to an art school at a very young age, and then that's when I started building artistic skills. But at the same time, I, I ran away from arts, tried to run away, because that's not a men's thing. Men don't do that, boys don't do that. So that's when culture comes in, where culture tries to pull you back and tries to stop you from exploring the world and trying to change what, uh, change the stereotype. And so I just dove in and went with it. So after that, um, my mom finds a job and then we're now going south of Johannesburg to a different place again. Now I'm in school and my sister finds a studio and she starts dancing. Latin American and ballroom, which my mom and dad, my mom and my grandfather did. And um, I have not found a soccer team yet. I have not found anyone to play sports with. And now I'm bored. So all I have is the outlet I have to take out my artistic uh, abilities was to draw on everything and write on everything, on cupboards, on the floor, on the streets, everywhere. And those were the challenges that I had. So I was bored and I got involved in very bad, bad things. Very, very bad, bad things that I will not talk about right now. <laughs> Um, I got into a lot of trouble, and so my sister, being a very nice sister, she asked me to, to pull me away from all of that, because it was really not working out, and she just wanted me to join her at the ballet studio that she was, not a ballet studio, a Latin American ballroom studio that she was at. And then that's when I joined her, but with a lot of, with a lot of push and pull, because uh, I said, if you want me to do that, can you do my chores? Can you do, can you, can you, because you know, every day you make me clean the toilet, you know, I don't like doing that. I feel like as an older sister, you're punishing me. So she said, oh, okay, fine, I'll do that for you if you come to the studio. I said, yes. And then, she, and then I said, and then I was like, okay, dishes? Okay, fine. And I said, two dollars? <laughs> well, rands in South Africa, but two rands. And she said, okay, fine, all of that, let's go. I was like, fine. And I went there. This is when, this is when, dance came in and um, I totally forgot about everything else. So the teacher said to me, oh, you know, how are you? How are you doing? Oh, you have a great talent. And I said, ah, oh, whatever. I'm just helping my sister out. She's paying me for this. <laughs> yeah, really, she was paying me for this. So I said, okay, well, this is my job now. I'm getting paid at a young age and I used to brag to my mom and she just laughed at me. So the teacher just um, saw something good. Saw something good and that's when she said, you know what, there's a lovely, lovely young lady over there and she needs a partner to go to a competition. Would you please help her out? Just one competition, please. Now I'm sitting there and I'm like, five rands? She says yes, and I go, yes, it's happening. We train for about four months. We go to a competition. I win the competition with this girl. Now I'm hooked. Now I'm hooked. This is when now I'm like, I can't do this, I can't do this. Maybe if I ask for more five rands, I'll have like, you know, a hundred after five weeks or something. So now I'm making, I'm calculating all this money that I'm gonna make. But then I slowly forgot about that because it took over, you know. My, my, my calling had called me and took and said, hey, look, this is, where you, this is what you have to do. And I, told, I slowly forgot about it. My, two years later, my mom says, oh, you're still dancing? And I go, oh yeah. I used to get paid for this, right? So now I don't get paid for it. And she goes, well, this is you now. And I just said, well, I'm still winning, right? So I'm gonna keep doing it. Kept going, kept going, kept going, kept going. And now I'm at school. I go through a lot of problems with my dance partners because I was way too, way too adventurous and I always wanted to work harder and harder and harder and harder and more and more and more to win go, 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 silver, 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 silver. So I was just, all about winning and had no idea about anything else. Because though I'd never had those things, so this is now time for me to get all these things and get accustomed to them. And then, um, I have no partner, all my partners left me because I'm just too crazy and I work too hard and I work them into the ground and I didn't know how to work with somebody else. I only thought about myself. I was a very selfish child. Yes, I was. I own that. <laughs> so, um, I have nothing to do again. My Latin American teacher says, wow, what are we gonna do now? Guess what, on TV just that night, 
there was an advert about uh, the Mariinsky coming to South Africa. I see it, I ignore it, I'm like, pfft, whatever. And then they say, oh, history of Mariinsky, this dancer so and so and so and so went through the school and then went through the company, and this was Barashnikov and Nureyev. And now I see this, these guys just go like that on the screen. And I'm just like this. And my mom goes, what are you doing? I say, this guy's awesome. I'm hooked now onto this. And, I just w and, and, and I'm just looking at it, but my mom goes, you know, this is not good for you. Don't, don't try to run away from everything when nothing's working out for you. And I said, no, I'm not running away. I just want to do it. I don't know why. I just want to do it. So she goes and tells my teacher that I saw this thing. Did she see it on TV? And she said, yes, I did see it. And I think you should take Andile there because I think he's got everything that you, that, that art form is for. And I think he would do really well. And because he, he at, at this stage, is young and he thinks about, he, he really wants to nurture himself and really get ahead. This will be good for him to really explore himself. And then maybe he can come back, but when he, when he, he has to face himself and face himself and, so, and, so, and face his challenges in order to, in order to uh, prosper. And so my mother says, fine. And my teacher finds me at school the next day. Came out of school, I'm going to play with my friends. My teacher says, come on, get in the car. I say, where are we going? She says, I'm going to town, you know, I need someone to help with my groceries and this and that and that. Okay, I say, okay, fine, I'll help you, no problem, let's go. We walk into a ballet studio with girls in pink tights and leotards and I'm like this. And I have no, n nothing, nothing to audition with or anything. I didn't even know it was an audition. So I'm like, what are we doing here? These are not groceries. These are just, well, what is this? You know? And she says, oh, no, 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 come on, just meet. We, we're just passing here. This is my friend, a friend of mine. This was Martin Schoenberg. So we walk into the studio, and there are boys and girls there, and they dance into this nice, you know, beautiful music, soft and all relaxing. So I'm just sitting there watching and watching, and then, all of a sudden, I get asked to take off my pants and stand there. Take off my pants? Really? Really? I, I start looking around the room saying, this is awkward. Can you give me some shorts or something? So he goes, well, uh, go in the car and I have some swimming trunks. Or, you know. And these were tight swimming trunks. <laughs> and I was not comfortable with it. Not comfortable with it at all, because in Latin America, you wear pants, so it's okay. Now, I, things start escalating quickly, and I am on the floor in splits. Never done splits in my life. So this is natural. And then he um, starts testing my feet and starts testing my hands and my head and everything, how flexible I am. And the next thing I know, I'm jumping across the room. The next thing I know, I'm done with the class and I get a scholarship, full paid scholarship, clothes, food, living, Anything I need, I just need to say, I need this, and sponsor will pay for it. But I didn't understand what a full scholarship was, and I said, oh, okay, fine, I'll, I'll, I'll sign down, whatever, and then take it to my mother. I have nothing to do, I'm bored. Give me something to do. And then he says, well, on top of that, I'm gonna put a school. And so I went to an old boys school. Now it's a challenge. I'm a ballet dancer in a boys school. Boys that play rugby and wrestle and play soccer and just, a boy. I was a boy too, so I was like, nah, this is nothing. And I had to live a secret in this boy's school about for four years, until the last year when I graduated and we all had to say where we were going. What is our next step? This after f three years of training um, with Martin Schoenberg, kept this a secret. Boys didn't know at school. I still kept playing soccer with them and everything while I was, was bad. It was bad, but I still kept doing it because I wanted to fit in. And fitting in was the thing at that time, or else I was going to get, uh, you know, get picked, picked on. And right. so now I'm graduating high school, and I just get picked on like that, all of a sudden. And that's when I was actually, I said to myself, I'm lucky that I actually, this is happening now at the end instead of in the beginning of high school. And um, I did get picked on a lot, and I did mm -hmm. get uh, beat up sometimes because mm -hmm. I was in tight and in very tight fitting things. And so that's when I started thinking about what am I going to do now? Am I going to go to, am I still going to carry on with this ballet thing? Because this is really hurting me. What am I going to do? Uh, my environment is really bad. It's very hostile because boys 
don't accept me, they don't like me, they don't want anything to do with me because I do something else that doesn't fit with them. So I go talk to my teacher, and my teacher talks to me about it, and uh, yeah, we are here now, and we, I'm, doing, I'm doing ballet, so I keep doing ballet. And I, over, I overcame it, I overcame it, because mm -hmm. I slowly forgot about it, slowly forgot about it, and years escalated, escalated, and I started doing competitions, 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 right. and again, and again, and again. Now this competition thing is back, but now I can focus and control it. Now I can control yes. the, the winning, the losing, and accepting, and then, um, that was it. I was in the National Ballet, uh, in the Corte Ballet. Good. A um, couple of years later, I do a competition in South Africa. I win a gold medal in the contemporary, se contemporary category, and that category was the one where I was chosen by uh, Septim Weber, the director of Washington Ballet, and then that's when I was 18. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, Good. And then that's it. That's how I came to America. Well, welcome, and thank you for that story. You're welcome. Wonderful. Thank you. Casper, tell us about yourself. Hi, my name's Casper. Uh, I'm from Inglewood, California, which is right next to LAX, the airport. Um, I've lived there all my life, a um, little bit in Georgia, and then I came back when I was around five, and that's when uh, dance was introduced into my life. Um, so my family danced and everything, and like my aunt danced for like Beyonce and like things like that, which is cool. And I was like, oh, she travels the world, like that she can do that. I was like, that's amazing, but it didn't click. You know, you're just like, oh, the world, I want to do that, not the dance part. It's like I just want to travel the world. And then um, there's this movie called um, it's called Beat Street and Breaking. There's a, di a different movie, and also You Got Served. And this movie You Got Served. Uh, I was sitting in my grandfather's house. And I remember the day I was like, okay, th I'm gonna try this. This is like what I wanna do. Um, this movie, You Got Served, basically what it is, is two different crews who fight against each other at this big like preliminary thing in this battle that's like televised on TV and it shows their daily lives and everything. And they were doing head spins and they were flipping their bodies in a way I've never seen. Next thing you know, I push the table away in the living room and I'm trying these things in the middle of the, the, uh, the living room. And my parents are like, well, I guess it's that time. And at the exact same time, when I was like five to six years old, um, my parents got a divorce. And so I, I had to cope with it somehow, you know what I mean? I, I didn't know exactly what it meant. I knew it was different. And uh, it was changing the way I was living and everything, having to switch and go to different houses. And um, so my father, he, um, he struggled with addiction. And so when I was going to his houses, it was always somebody else's house and things like that. It was never like really his house. And um, that was another thing was like, I don't know who my father was. And you think you do because, you know, uh, that's just the facade people put on. And like, uh, so that's one thing is like my father and my mother, on the other hand, uh, she had me when she was in college. So uh, she didn't get to finish college. So after this, uh, and we're dancing and stuff, I just wanted to give you a little background on them because it comes back later. Um, when I'm dancing and stuff, and like I'm, I want to take these classes, and I, I go to the studio, Universal Dance Design, that uh, Arlene Kennedy and her brother created. Um, it's in LA, and it's the studio that my mother went to. So I go and I take a class, a hip hop class, that surprisingly my aunt ended up teaching the class, and um, I had so much fun. And I remember uh, taking this class, and I was, okay. Sorry, little side notes that are gonna help the story at the end, I promise. Yeah. And so, um, I was diagnosed with ADHD, which is atten attention deficit hyperactive disorder, which means that I have like the ability to hyper-focus on specifically other things that you know aren't task at hand. So when I was taking the class, I'd run around the class, and I was that kid. And I'd run around the class, and then uh, this guy pulls me over, and he's a friend of my aunt's. And he's, he says, hey man, da da da, and he like, he knows that my attention's not so grasped on the choreography at hand. It's more of like, I just want to like dance and do cool stuff. So he pulls me aside and he does this thing. You know where mimes act like they're in a box and they like move it? And like, I was so amazed by that, that he pulled me over and he, st he sh showed me how to do it. And surprisingly, my mother has this on tape. It's like the moment where it was like, okay, he can be a dancer versus he wants to be a dancer. <laughs> and they like saw some uh, potential. Um, and so that's the moment that kicked in. 
uh, this other movie. And so my life's like really inspired by like movies. There's this movie documentary called Rise. And what it does is um, probably one of the newer styles of hip hop is Crump, which originates from LA. And they did a documentary on it and um, how it became to be. And so I went and I watched with my cousins because he flew in from Jap Japan because uh, my grandfather lives in, in Japan. And, um, and my uncle came and we all went and watched the movie and everything. And I come out and by the, I have a broken arm at this time because I was doing crazy stuff like skateboarding and like a whole bunch of tricks and stuff. So I always had the energy to like do the things. But I had a broken arm and so I'm dancing right out the movie theater, like doing what I saw in the movies with a broken cast and everything. And my mom's like, this boy is crazy. Like, you know, he's like, he's, he gets inspired by like so many different dance movies. He's like, and my attention was never set on it. It was like, all right, just playing around, but he's just doing it. And so um, I found out that the crew is actually like four miles away from me, from where I lived in Eaglewood, California. And um, so I started doing the crew, right? I joined in, took some classes. They finally let me in the crew. I'm super excited. I'm still a little kid spazzing out, though. It's not like, you know, like an amazing like, dancer or something. I'm a little kid spazzing out and all that. And um, we're performing at parties and stuff like that. Now, the people that are in these crews aren't the best of people. They just uh, express themselves through art and dance. Um, they are all from gangs and stuff like that. And so um, pe people knew me like as like the little brother. And so nobody got, I had, nobody uh, messed with me anymore. Now, when I was in elementary, second grade, I get kicked out the class. Like, not by like the teacher, by like a student who physically kicked me because they thought the color of my skin. Uh, this is the time, you know, you learn about slavery and stuff like that. And there, I go to an all black school, a Mexican school. And so the black girl, she kicked me out with, my, with her foot and everything, closed the door and locked it and said, you can't be in here. You know what I mean? And it's, she was confused and like ignorant to the situation. So I was just mad and like I couldn't do anything about it. And uh, that day I walked home and, um, and I, I was walking home because I only lived two blocks away from the school and I get jumped, right? I get jumped by this gang, Pyru, which is a blood gang in LA. And uh, mine, kids that in LA join gangs around like, you can be 12 years old and be in a gang. So these are people who are like, oh, it's a little scrawny boy, you know, he's doing what he does. And then, um, and then we, t we, t we, tell, we tell the family, well, the dance family from the, the crew, we call them family because, you know, we have each other's back. We tell them, and then you know people go handle it. I'm not gonna say what happened, but get the gist of what I'm saying. And so they handled it, and that's when I realized that dance could create a family for me that I didn't have because my parents had split and stuff. I never got to experience a full combined family. Put your mic up so people can. I'm so sorry. Um, to experience a full combined family and things like that, and that's where I found that love was I can experience life with people and and share something with people. And that's the first communication of like love I had felt was between other dancers, and so um, now we're now I'm like eight years old, you know what I mean? Uh, around seven, I guess you can say I turned professional. I was getting played to uh, perf at, by this time. My mom's like, oh, you know, the LA Clippers want little kids to dance and stuff, so try out for the thing, for it to perform at like halftime and stuff like that. And um, I I made it somehow because uh, I had like a cricket backflip and they thought that was cool. And uh, I made it and then I did that for three years. And then uh, I also did the Sparks kids, which is the Sparks, the, like, they're the WNBA version of like the Lakers. Um, also, right after that, um, I'm in rehearsal for the street because I was still dancing in the street, coming up at parties, performing, magic shows, things of that nature, because that's what we did. and. Um, and what we do is we had two rehearsals per week. And um, I go to rehearsal, and we're having it at the Debbie Allen Dance Academy every now and then. And after time, you know, we have it more and more over there. And uh, Debbie Allen sees me through a window, and she's like, she stares at me. And I didn't know who she was, because, you know, I'm just a kid, like, dancing, because I just wanted to dance, and it was something to do to kill my time. Like, <laughs> so uh, she comes, she says, hey, like, come here. And she looks at me, and she's like, uh, Hey, we're having this hip-hop intensive, which um, Isaiah won the battle at, uh, that you were talking about, about Abraham's son. Uh, that, that same place that they have every year. Um, 
and like we have a hip hop intensive. And so I said, uh, and she was like, we'd like you to attend. And I'm like, well, I can't really afford it. My, my mother didn't have a job because the whole uh, college, you know, it's hard to get a job out in LA with, if you don't have a college degree. And so, um, and so she's like, okay, we'll do a like, full scholarship. And I went, I enjoyed it. I ended up doing that for three years. Then they asked me to do the summer program. Now this is that moment where you see girls in tights and things like that. And you're like, no, I'm not gonna do that. And they're like, why? And they're like, I was like, no. So I got asked a couple more years after. And, and, um, and so I was like, you know what, I'll do it. Cause my mother's saying it's gonna make me a better dancer and stuff like that. And I finally saw how many spins that person could do. And I was like, oh, this is, I guess. You know, those spins are dope, like, <laughs> I can do that. And so um, I ended up doing it, and I didn't have to wear tights. They let me wear sweats, like, thank God. Um, <laughs> no, nothing against the tights. It was just, you know, that transition is hard for a young kid who gets picked on because of the color of his skin, and he's super skinny, and, like, you know what I mean? It's, like, already enough. Like, you want me to wear tights and be all the, you know what I mean? <laughs> so right. I was like, ah, uh, sweats will do. And so I do that, and then they have a tap one, and now I'm doing tap, modern, jazz, ballet, hip-hop, and everything and, uh, for these summers. And then they're like, hey, we want you to do, um, we want you to do year-round. And by this, I'm still doing full scholarship. And so I, I, I do this, um, and they're like, we want you to do year-round. And they're like, but you have to uphold the GPA. Mine, I didn't give not one care about mm. school because I had ADHD. And my mind was not set on uh, sitting behind the desk for hours yes. and, you know what I mean, like writing, it just, it didn't work for me, it still doesn't, but I've made it work. <laughs> and so um, what they did was they said, only way you can keep dancing here on full scholarship is if you get a higher grade. Right, right. Now I have a goal, because at first I just didn't care, so I wasn't doing anything. But now I have a goal. And so when you have a goal, you know, it's easier to accomplish things. And so I was like, all right, you know what? I have my mindset on this, I'll do it. Uh, I showed up, I was like, hey, look, I got two A's, two B's, and one C, can I attend? And they were like, <laughs> they were like yeah, as long as you keep working on it. I was like, all right. Next thing you know, I'm going full uh, year round, they call it, which is like completely sure. around. And, um, and uh, I joined, and I'm like, oh yeah, they have hip hop class, I'm gonna love this. I'm gonna love this. Um, little did I know, when, when you're doing all these different classes, you don't put as much energy and you don't have time to do what you started and why you, like for what you loved, you know what I mean? Right, and right. so uh, I'm doing all these things and like, they're like, okay, cool. By, by the, I think it was like the second class, they were like, all right, we'd like to move you up a le level. Cause I was able to do the splits and I had like really good turnout and good. they were like, okay, you know, we need somebody in there, so can you scoot up? And my mother was like, no. And I was like, why not, mom? Look, I'm good at this, I can do it. And then she's like, no, you need to learn the elements and so that you have a strong base and things like that. And I'm like, why? But little, you know, and, and then you think about it, and now I'm grateful that she did that. Good. And like, good. I go step by step, and I work my way up, and then I realized that I had lost my love for what I did and why I started dancing. Okay. And so, uh, and I was lost, and like, you know, there's like, the fire stops a little bit, mm -hmm. and like, you're just stuck in this little, um, like, uh, this flow that you sure, just stay sure. here, and you're not progressing anymore. And so, um, what had happened was, um, I make it to like, advance, you know what I mean? Good. And uh, thankful enough, um, Rasta Thomas actually directed the uh, academy for a little bit, and, um, what I love, <laughs> he really got me through some tough times, man. Right. I was like, no, I can't do this. I, I'm like, I'm done, like, I don't wanna do this. And he, w he was like, all right, we took a ballet class and we did not hear one classical piano. I was dancing to Biggie Smalls and things nice. like that. And that gave me inspiration. And I was like, whoa, I can do this. You know, it's Good. fun again. I have a smile on my face. That's the hip hop's there. Well, not, not specifically the hip hop, it's just the idea that sure. something I love is helping me through something I don't know. Good. So, and when you have that, it gives a light, and you're, it's, it's, it's able to get that incline again, and you're not stuck Good. in that level. Um, Gasper, I want to make sure we have time for yeah, um, Ming as well. Could, yeah. Do you want to add a couple more words before I we switch over? I can wrap it up, yeah. Um, so basically, uh, my mother couldn't afford to pay the bills. Uh, I was getting these jobs and everything, finally got an agent. I was able to pay the bills. Mine, I'm like in seventh and eighth grade, and so, um, I was, uh, I'm paying these bills and everything, and my mom finally gets a job and stuff, and so that was great, and I got to keep some money and everything, yeah. because we were about to like lose our house and everything of that nature, 
then um, mm. uh, then my father went to rehabilitation, and uh, he fell off the wagon once, but then went back on, and he um, he also he also went back to school, and he got his master's in special education, and then which is like ADHD, you know, when right. ADHD, sure, sure. and he's he's helped me get through a lot of the situations of learning, and that's like one of the biggest things I can give because he, I think he like did that for Good. me and to get the respect and everything and um, so my mother's taken care of she has a uh, job and she's she's raising my um, little sister and um, everything's good because I'm able to travel the world doing what I love and um, not being able to like have to deal with di discrimination and things yeah. like that right. because people respect me for what I do and I think okay. that's why I really love um, art in general is because um, it gave me like a hustle. I own my own clothing line now. I also am co-founder of a nonprofit organization that helps Excellent. high school students um, give back to their communities. And Good. so um, I'm head of uh, culture there. And like I Good. teach dance classes all around the city and everything. And so I think I'm in a great place to where I'm giving back enough while still learning and while still leading. Mm -hmm. And I think um, that's how art impacted my life. Excellent. Uh, got me through emotional, physical, and like um, mental situations. Thank you. Thanks, Casper, for your Thank story. You. Yeah, Sorry, that took so long. Sorry. <laughs> Ming, you've been very patient. Please okay. tell us your story as well. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just right close uh, to your mouth. My name is Ming Davis, and um, I'm from China. Thirty years ago. So I learned dance in China and the capital Beijing. I was studied uh, dance in the uh, Beijing uh, Dance Academy, uh, Beijing, China. The talking about 1960, I start go went to that school. So don't count my <laughs> my age. <laughs> so fif 55 years, you know, I've been a dance. Um, but my story is total different yours. <laughs> when I was in dancing school, 1960, so that school, uh, ballet in China, no ballet for till 1954. So Chinese uh, Dance Academy, they start in the 1954. Our teacher from a Russian, so very a few uh, Russian teachers. I think it's like five, six teachers from Russian. They start training the Chinese people for the uh, teacher for the ballet teacher. I was in, I was started the school in the 1960. So I still remember when I start, you know, in the school. I I see the Russian teacher and a very young Chinese teacher. But that time, whole country, no more ballet, um, ballet school at all. So we're very, very beginnings for ballet. Good things, we don't need to pay anything. Government pay all the things. We stay there, sleep there, <laughs> you know, every day study, dance, dance. But you can you can imagine because nobody see the ballet. We don't we don't know what what's called ballet. You know, just no idea of ballet. We know the Chinese folk dance, of course. My my shirt. <laughs> okay, so when I was in the uh, dancing school start, my teacher uh, there forced the education the first group for education from that school. So my teacher really, really young. And uh, uh, the Russian teacher taught us some uh, very short time. You know, Chinese government with Korea, uh, Russian government got a problem on the 1961. So suddenly one weekend, one Monday we got started go to the you know, class, no more Russian teacher at all. So. All of the Chinese young teachers start that point, you know. But we all the system from Russian, so we still know 
which year, which, what should we practice, what should we learn. Yeah, we learn ballet, we learn Chinese folk dance, we learn the Chinese tradition, you know, the classical dance. We even we learn some, uh, you know, gymnastic you know, turn, cardio, something like that. So, <laughs> but very soon, I was start in the 1960. I only learned that in the school, like a four years, then they have a big show come out, celebration, um, the national you know, Chinese government, uh, 15 years anniversary. So we joined the big show. So we stop normal class. We start and practice the big show. So means I only get a four years really learning the ballet. After that show, we thought maybe we can start really learn ballet. No, 1966, I don't know anybody knows, Cultural Revolution start. The Chinese Cultural Revolution means no school. All school closed. You're going to revolution, <laughs> you know. Go to the, on the stage, um, no, on the street, or you go to the different college, you know, revolution. This kind of revolution, just you're against your own teacher, you're against your own principal. So everybody, I, I don't know how to explain that. If you work on the factory, then you will be against, you know, do something for your boss. This whole country is crazy. No school, no work. Everybody just travel, free travel. So myself, I go with a few people. We travel to the all the way to the west, to the Xinjiang. If you know the Chinese map, you know the Beijing round and the east, right? All the way to the west is to Xinjiang and the Tibet. So we. We take a train, four days, four nights, five days, all free. Take the trains all the way to the Xinjiang for nothing. Just, you know, I, I want luck because we, you don't need to go to school, you have nothing to do. And it's all the students, no school. So everybody want to travel. So the train is so crowded. I can't get a train. So we threw the window. You know, one push one through the window, come to the train. So we're, but anyway, we get it, you know, we have fun that time. No school till all, but almost one year. But we're, we already learned some things, you know. The, so we start thinking about, mm, this is not good. You know, you just play around. And this large city, it's big city, a lot of trouble. They fight, you even you the gun, you know, fight each other because they have different team, different part. Okay, so our Chinese and our some Chinese students from a dancing school, and with some students from a mu music school. So we put it together, and we get a little team. So we perform all over the not not China most on the north of the China. So suddenly, the school say, okay, everybody come back. We should start in the school. So we back to the school, not normal class, just kind of back to the school. So, but anyway, we, we start back to the exercise and uh, learn something. Uh, so this cultural revolution during the 10 years, during the 10 years, as a whole country, just terrible. Yeah, just very political, so I don't want to say too much. You know, if anybody introduce that, you can come to me, I can tell you more about it. It's so political, you know. Um, so after that, I, I got a job from a dancing, uh, the <laughs> get back, uh, and that at, at dance, um, Ballet company, yeah, you know, Central Ballet Company of Beijing, because we start uh, performing during the Cultural Revolution. Ten days, 
we only have two ballet to do to perform. And all of the Chinese, Chinese, uh, the choreographer with Chinese story and become ballet, we use the point shoes, not, uh, you know, Charlene, we, we did some part. Beautiful dance, but only two dance. Everything from a West country is not good. When we exercise, no leotard. We have to dress, you know, have a normal sleeve like here, short, because if you show your leg, show your shoulder means not good. <laughs> I can't believe it. No Swan Lake, no Slim Building, nothing from West. You know, music, no Mozart, <laughs> no Strauss, nothing for 10 years. Mm. After that, you know Mao, our Mao Ch channel, you know, Chairman Mao died at the year in 1976. That year in China is a big, huge change. So we have three big leaders, the government leaders, all died in one, one year. And uh, after that, the whole thing, because the center government start broken, because the three big leaders come. So people finally think about cultural revolution is not good. You know, during that time, the Chinese people are so poor. We have, uh, I don't know how many years, we don't have enough eat to eat, uh, food to eat. Right. Everybody have a sticker, for the, like, like a paper, and give you, like, like me, maybe I got a 25 pounds for, for uh, rice right. or you know, all flowers. Mm -hmm. Maybe boys a little bit more, but if you're younger, you're less. So people know, even you buy soap, even you buy matches, mm -hmm. match. Everything you need a sticker. They give you maybe two stickers for your two pounds meat, right. or give you maybe one pound sugar. Give you, every family have same very limited food to eat. So for many, many years, right. that's how poor in China. Mm -hmm. So after Cultural Revolution, uh, the people realize that's not good. The country will be broken, you know, they're already broken. So we start open the door to the war. I say before it's really close, you know, no yes. West country, anything, music and the political, anything. We're so close. But the government told us America's not good, you know, yes. only Russian is good. Yeah. Then later it, they're broken with Russian too. So like no friends. Everybody stay on the square and that they don't know anything about the world. But 1980s start, the doors slightly opened. Right. Why they opened? Because some, some people, their relative already in Hong Kong, maybe they're in the, you know, American sure. yep. and the West country. So they start think about, they want to go to the family, so they're going. But... I mean, we have about three more minutes, so if you want to finish okay. up, then we'll, we'll move on. Yeah. So that's how I start thinking about, I want to go out. Mm -hmm. I want to see the world. So why I say that the dance saved my you know, life? Yes. First of all, I was in the dancing school, so I, I don't need to go of the country, side of the country. I don't need to live with, uh, with for my family. My age, everybody went to the side of the country and live with the no uh, stranger family. Right. The way from a family, but I'm lucky because I'm in dancing school. Yes. Second of all, because I'm dancing, I know, I know the ballet, so, it, so it, I apply for the Martin Matthew Graham Dance School. It, it, it's up to me. So I'm very good reason I can come to this country and the live in China. Of course, the between large stories, I hard to get my passport, but finally I get my passport and get a visa. So I come to this country. Good, thank you, Ming. <laughs>
Well, as I've listened to the three of you tell us these arresting stories, and thank you again for bringing those stories into the room and telling us them with such honesty and vulnerability, I just will close by noting, as you've uh, spun these tales for us, I've seen these themes of not only resilience and meaning and persistence, but also my big takeaway here is the importance of tights. There's deep meaning in tights, I can tell this, and I'm gonna carry that through me for many years to come. Let's give another round of applause to our three storytellers. Thank you so much.